morning. Everyone's doing well today. This is Otto. I'm Nick, and I'm here with the uh, Tierra Permaculture vlog. So, today we're gonna just do a little bit of a garden update, and I got some seeds to plant, and we had a lot of rain yesterday, so I'm gonna check in with the chicken systems. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to mulch that up, so I'm gonna show you guys that as well. So, this is gonna be a general garden update, general garden uh, chores need to get done to make sure that this thing keeps going. So, uh, yeah, we won't spend too long on this coffee time today, but cheers if you are drinking this in the morning with coffee. Cheers to you. And uh, let's get started. All right, so looking at the chickens here, looks like, yeah, they can definitely use some fresh bedding. So you can see down here, lots of uh, soil starting to become exposed. That deep bedding layer I put down is still there, so that's helping protect everything here, keeping it not smelly and protecting the soil that's here. And all this stuff's starting to break down nicely, so it's gonna be a perfect start to the compost pile coming up real soon. So let's get these guys fed and get them some new, some new bedding. Right, so just added, added some hay, some straw. I always forget the, the two of those. I think I mentioned that before, but add some of that down today to basically add another layer of mulch after all the rain that we had. It gives them a nice dry layer of bedding to walk on and to dig through. They, they really like that. It also keeps them healthier. Um, better for their feet to have something dry to walk on. So definitely if you're in a wet climate, uh, just make sure you have a stockpile of some sort of kind of dry mulch that you can use. And that can just be grass that you harvest from your site. Um, but here, when I do harvest grass from my site, since I don't have that big of a site, I usually use it for either the compost or for mulching. So um what i usually do is actually buy like hay bales buy hay bale and i use that as my bedding here and then that ends up turning into compost hey mama's doing how you doing <laughs> as usual very talkative this one this one just wants my cuddles and the rooster is just like, just pull up behind everyone, keeping an eye on everything. You wanna come in? Let me see this mama. She likes to come in and cuddle up on, <laughs> on my leg here. This is her thing. So I call her my mama because she likes to cuddle up with me. And it's Katie's mama because she likes, she just thinks that one's pretty over there. Katie's mama. Katie's mom is very talkative. She likes to, to yammer on about everything. My mom is very loving until she's not, until she wants me to, if I stop petting her or she's not liking what I'm doing, then she starts pecking at me. She's kind of feistier. All right, mom, I gotta go. I got things to do, all right? I got things to do, okay? Come on, come on, let's go. I spend a lot of time in here with them. I really enjoy hanging out with the chickens in the morning, especially if I'm still waking up a little bit. It's nice just to kind of be in there with them. It's good to keep socializing them. If you are keeping chickens and, you know, if you're just keeping them to grow meat and everything, that's a, that's a different story, right? You're not maybe not gonna socialize them as much, but if you're keeping chickens for eggs in your backyard, especially if you're just getting going and you're just starting a garden, chickens can end up being, you know, like another kind of pet, you know? So I, I recommend socializing with them a lot, especially if you have a rooster, if you're keeping a rooster, definitely socialize him a lot because it's gonna cause much less problems over time. Uh, he won't get as feisty towards you, he won't be as mad at you, and he likely won't attack you. Just don't kick the rooster. If the rooster gets kicked, he's gonna always think of the foot as the enemy, and then he's always gonna be attacking your foot. Watermelon baby here. He's doing pretty well, growing at a decent clip. I uh, added compost and, and mulched this area where the actual uh, vines come out of. I want to protect them a little bit and add a little bit of nutrient. It seems to be doing all right. Otto still likes to come up here quite often, quite frequently, so it's not the best. Let's see. 
Got another one down here. It's pretty exciting. And let's check on here again, guys. I'm just doing like a little bit of a little bit of a garden update here. So I'm showing you. This here is cumin. We think Katie keeps thinking it's dill because it does look like dill. Same family, I believe. But I'm pretty sure it's cumin because I planted cumin seeds and then these came up. So I don't know. You tell me who's right, Katie or me. Well, I guess we'll find out when it uh, flowers and starts giving us giving us some fruit. But it's certainly in the same family, I'm pretty sure, as the uh, as dill or fennel or anything like that. The peppers over here are doing a little bit better. We had transplanted some away from here and into this bed. And this bed, they're definitely doing better. They like it here. This is this one was transplanted, and all these right here were transplanted. And they were much sadder looking, and now they're super green, lots of fresh new growth. I'll link above to when I actually transplanted these, uh, if you do want to check out that video to see the difference. But these guys seem to be doing well. This one, the two back here actually got this little bit of like a like a leaf like a leaf uh, curl or something. I didn't know if it was caterpillars or what. So I just picked off all the leaves that were not so uh, healthy and it seems to be kicking back. So keep keep an eye on that one. Here are the flower beds doing well. Producing lots of these cosmos. Pretty cosmos from a lady. Zinnias definitely seem like they're going to flower sometime soon. I don't see any buds yet, but they're putting a lot. Ooh, there's a bud right there. So we got one coming. Seems like they're gonna they're gonna go soon. Just harvested from this bed, this uh, greens bed, kale and New Zealand spinach. The two in here. And actually, I've, I'm finding that the more I'm harvesting in here with this New Zealand spinach, the more it starts kind of spreading out. So this is the behavior that I was expecting, where it just kind of clambers out and kind of spreads around the ground. That's what I was expecting, and that's kind of what it's starting to do now that we added that compost and this, uh, this really bulk mulch. So this is looking really great. I'm very happy with this. I've already harvested from here three or four times. And uh, yeah, they're really good. The, the spinach, it does taste more or less like spinach. It has a very similar consistency, um, and it's supposed to be a perennial. It grows well in the tropics, so I'm really excited to kind of Double check that. I think it does need a little bit of protection from that heat, but I have it underneath these bananas and it seems to be doing great. Our, uh, speaking of bananas, our bananas are starting to kind of ripen up, you see here. So we'll be able to harvest this bunch real soon. Uh, what I've been told is the way to tell is you can cut this off and it kind of prevents, uh, it, it, it kind of slows down the ripening process for these guys. But I've been told when this gets really small, it's time to harvest. But I'm also looking at this and I'm seeing some yellow. So I think it's also somewhat close to harvest. Anyway, so next few weeks, hopefully, we'll be able to harvest that rack of bananas, share them with our community, because I don't think we can get through that many bananas that quickly. What is going on here? Right in here is where Otto decided to fertilize yesterday. He was a bad boy. He was left outside most of the day. Got to do some sort of consequences. I don't really know how to do consequences with cats. So I just, uh, I, when I see him doing it, I try to go grab him and I just tell him no a lot of times and kind of just show him where it is. And then he just usually gets upset because he knows he's in trouble and then he runs away and doesn't run away. He just kind of finds his own little world to be in for a while. And then when he comes back, he's meowing a lot like he's sorry. So at least that's how I'm interpreting it. That's probably just a, uh, humanization of the animal that isn't actually a reality, but that's life. These cucumbers are doing really well. They're super happy. Lots of fresh growth on these guys. A little bit of holes from various insects, but unless it starts really demolishing everything, I usually just let it be and uh, let them do their thing. Because I, you know, I want a harvest, but I also don't want to have things growing that aren't going to want to grow here, right? So obviously if I'm growing something that isn't adapted for the tropics, I'm going to have to, you know, help it along a little bit. But what I really want is seed that's uh, adapted for my site. And 
all all but this one right here all these cucumbers actually came from a a, cumer, cu yeah, a cucumber that we harvested from our site and we saved the seeds so this is actually a second generation cucumber from our site and it so far seems to be doing great and seems to be very happy this is the most recent transplant this came from the actual original seed batch um, just to give me a little bit of a kind of control and to see how the difference of growing is although this one was planted much later so it being smaller isn't necessarily a sign that it's not as good the melon over here is flowering a lot after it had been eaten back by the chickens so it's another sign that pruning tends to encourage new growth and and new fruiting but we got a lot of new leaves here so that's pretty that's pretty cool our zucchini is starting to produce down here okay you just seeing that yeah they are down there they're starting to produce small little guys pretty excited for that this is like the one plant that's really doing well down here and has been for a while but the rest of them after after quite a lot of kind of not sure if they're actually going to make it they're all starting to boom they've all kind of find their spot in the sun so and up here these guys these are the ones that are doing not so well and i started finding like a little kind of powdery mildew on them so I've been picking off the leaves and I'm finding that you can see there's a little bit on this leaf here I don't know if you guys will be able to see that a little bit of powdery mildew so I've been just picking off the leaves that I see that really taking over and uh, letting it grow new ones and that seems to be working they seem to be getting really healthy lots of flowers so I'm pretty happy with that these beans are doing well we're actually not harvesting them uh, fast enough honestly but that's okay with me because I do want to keep a couple of these first round, uh, first round pods as seeds. That tends to be my strategy is whatever ones produce quickly and produce nice big beans or nice big seed pods of any sort, depending on what it is. I like to keep those for, um, for future beans because they'll be, again, like I keep saying, more adapted to my site. Showed this the other day, but I think these guys are now ready to harvest this white seeded sunflower you can see in there another one right here with white seeds in there this one's really apparent i'm really excited to see how these see how these taste and we got a bunch of them over here and a bunch of babies right here so this will be another sunflower row auto Taking a little bit of a break in the grass here. This is our quick little coffee break in the middle of this. Actually shot about another 10 minutes of film, but my phone ran out of uh, space, so I lost that. It's Otto's favorite spot in the morning. Usually my morning sitting chair, so this is where I usually go if I'm uh, getting ready. For the vlog and i don't know what i'm going to talk about i'll just go out there and take a seat and look around and figure it out or it's my afternoon sitting spot where i just need to relax and take in the garden and decompress from the day great place to do that right in the garden that's what's so nice about uh having a garden in your backyard that's productive and uh you have animals to visit and play with All right, continuing on with the garden update. These tomatoes jamming, they're loving it. They're doing great. They keep on producing. A little bit of splittage here I'm seeing because we had a lot of rain yesterday and that guy was ripe, but mostly not so much. Striped Roma tomatoes, really beautiful, doing great. There's a lot of them on the vine. Lots of them on the vines. Super happy about that. This bed. We cleaned up yesterday, I'll link to that if you're interested in seeing what I did, but we basically added compost and mulch after weeding. And these jalapenos are starting to look really good and it looks like we might have our first little jalapeno pepper trying to come on, which is really exciting because if you know me at all, you know that I like spicy food and I love jalapenos. So lots of kale throughout, This all this 
Uh, these chives are doing really well. They're starting to look like kind of chives. These guys are perennial, so they take a little bit of time to get going. And uh, But they are, I think they're going to do pretty well right here. There's enough sun, but the soil stays nice and moist. So I think it's going to do well. Tomatillos, that's another story. Don't do so well. So I learned recently that tomatillos actually don't do well in humid, humid climates because the pollen actually gets too sticky and doesn't actually leave the flower. So you might have pollinators, plenty of pollinators, plenty of flowers, but no fruit. So we actually had just a dry spell recently and it did start producing fruit, but I'm noticing that none of them are actually coming to fruition. They all start kind of rotting on the vine a little too soon. So I think it's just a little too wet here for them. But this is how you learn, you know, you try something, you think it might work, doesn't work, you move on, you try something new. There's a little baby lizard down here. I wonder if I can get him in the shot for you. See him down there, a little baby lizard. Hey guy, what are you doing? Oh, see ya. <laughs> Lizards are a fun little thing in the garden. Otto's one of Otto's favorite playthings, lizards. He chases those all the time. All right, so I think I covered everything, but like I said earlier, I uh, this thing, it stopped filming. So if I missed anything and didn't show you something that you want to see, let me know in the comments below and I'll pick it up from there. Oh, Rooster is letting me know that he is here. I just let them out to get down to their dust bath area because it's been super rainy and I wanted them to be able to get a nice dry dust bath. Next thing I'm gonna do is uh, get some seeds started. So my greenhouse, nothing, nothing came up this kind of second round of seeding. I did throw a bunch of small seeds in this little tray and I just keep watering it. Definitely some chamomile there. That actually might be a chamomile um, coming up, but it also might just be one of the local weeds here or local plants that I don't want on my property or not don't want to be productive. I don't really mind if they're here. They can be here all they want. It's not going to bother me. All right. So instead of using uh, these kind of, I have them here, but these plastic trays, uh, I just hate them. I hate them. They're so annoying. They break all the time. I feel like I'm wasting all this plastic and I, I just, I don't really like them. I use them when I need to, and I need to produce a lot of seeds, and I don't have the time and energy to do the soil blocker, but I prefer not to. But what I like to use is this. It's called a soil blocker. Elliot Coleman really recommends this thing. He's a uh, he's kind of a market gardener, farmer person. And uh, what's really nice about this is it's stainless steel. It's reusable. You basically, there's these four little divots in here. You pack this full of wet soil, wet potting soil, nice and moist so it kind of sticks together. You get it nice and tight in there. You put it on whatever you're going to actually use as your seed starting tray, and you push this plunger down. And as it does that, you move this up slightly, and it pushes out the block and gives you a little indentation to put your seed. I've had a lot of success with these because the soil blocks themselves don't they, uh, they air prune. So when the roots of the plants that are growing hit the edge of those soil blocks, they don't want to grow into the air. So they stay in there. So it kind of keeps it a little more contained and also means I can take that whole block and just put it right into the soil. So less root disturbance at the beginning stage of the plant growth, which I, I like a lot. It makes it, it seems to me like it produces a better overall kind of stronger plant. At least that's what I've seen so far. So what you got to do is basically make your mix, make your potting mix. This is a mix of uh, essentially perlite, a little bit of sand and compost. I usually just use compost and sand, but I didn't have that when I made this mix and I've been reusing this mix. So I just added a little bit of compost just to kind of freshen it up, give it some new life in there. Not too much because the key with the potting mix is you want it to be fertile enough that the seed will grow, but not so fertile that uh, it's not gonna grow a strong root system. So you need it to be kind of right in between. So I tend to like using about 30 to 50% compost and then the rest sand, because the sand will just give it a nice drainage, nice pore spaces in there, but it won't take up too much of that, uh, it won't be too fertile, you know, and the roots can just really easily penetrate down 
through that sand. Creates a nice strong root network, but you gotta work with what you got. And this is what I got. Compost perlite and sandy, silty mixture. It's not great, honestly. It's not a great mixture, but I still use it because I need to start seeds and so far it's worked. So you get your mixture and you get it nice and wet, it's super soggy. So that's gonna be where I start. I'm just gonna get it super wet and then I'm gonna start mixing it in. So this just garden trowel, get that water all mixed in there. Just a little bit more water. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's starting to get sticky, especially up in here. This right here, that's starting to get sticky but the rest of it's still a little bit dry. I want it all to be wet in order to use this tool properly. All right, here's the mix. So you can see it's really wet, soggy, it kind of sticks together when you scrunch it up, but it's not like soaking, sopping wet where it's like pouring out of there. Kind of like a, uh, I actually don't know really what the consistency is like to try to describe it to you because it's going to depend on your potting mix. But you just need it to be kind of soggy, mushy. Then take your soil blocker. Kind of, best way to do it is kind of push it in and rotate it in to pack it in. And this, it takes a while of doing this to really get the technique down. But once you do, you'll end up with soil blocker that is full. And what I like to do is kind of tamp it down. So I know that it's nice and hard in there. And then I'm using just an old piece of plywood as my kind of soil uh, tray and I just put it on there and then push and voila. Four blocks of soil with a little indentation in there for the seeds to go and no plastic. So that's pretty exciting to me. And it's nice because you can pretty much do that anywhere. And I'm just gonna keep going with that project. All right, it took me about five, 10 minutes maybe. And now I got uh, 44 soil blocks. You can see they're nice and even, nice blocks. They're all separated, easy to separate if you get seeds started down in there. And that's my, uh, that's my way of uh, seeding up, getting seeds ready for starting. So now I'm just gonna actually put seeds in them, label them and then we're on the way. What are you doing in the greenhouse? What are you doing in the greenhouse? There we have it. Nice uh, new, new tray of seeds for future food and future flowers. You can see just a very basic notation system so I know what's growing where. 
and the soil blocks make it nice and easy for me to do that and the chickens are out enjoying their scratching in the little pasture here she ate the bug that was underneath the counter i found this morning nice i just put it in there she ate it right up <laughs> chickens guys chickens take care of your bug problems in the tropics just bring it out to them they'll eat them so will our cat though cat's weird that way cat uh cat loves to eat insects i guess not weird good on you cat All right, guys, that's it for me today. Hope you enjoyed that. A little garden update and some seed starting and how I do that process. So Katie's coming out now, so I get to see her. So, ooh, every, every time Katie comes out, the rooster calls. So anyway, hope you guys have a great day. If you like what you saw, please, ooh, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me uh, have a little motivation, but also just uh, get a little more reach. Makes me happy, makes me want to keep going. So like and subscribe, if you like the channel, and I hope you all have a great day. See you next time.